Hello, welcome to part 5 of this series. This one will be spent uh, just literally getting our model into Unity. Going to have a quick look at the workflow. We cover the whole workflow in this one video. So we're going to configure our model. We should have already done it, but we'll just double check it here. Um, we're also going to make sure that we create an UMA prefab if you haven't already got one from Secret Anarchs tutorial or anyone else's. Um, we're going to create a slot asset um, folder which will be imported into our slot library. Uh, we're going to um, import the slot into our slot library. We're going to ignore materials and overlays for now. And then we're going to call the slot on a generated UMA. But at this point it will look a little bit disturbing. So right so now what we're going to do is we're going to get our lovely model here into unity very quickly to make sure that this goes right and you don't end up with a head on your chest uh, yeah that does happen <laughs> um we're going to make sure the scale factor is set to 100 animation type is set to legacy and animations import animation is off so once we're happy with that we can finally get going hurrah I'm probably more excited about this than you, but never mind. Anyway, what we need to do is make sure we've got uh, UMA set up ready to put this in. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an UMA core. Um, now, obviously, if you've followed Secret Anorak's tutorial, you will have already done this. But if you haven't, then uh, just as a quick overview, please watch them. But I'll do it very quickly. I can't spell. Slot library. So slot library. Uh, we need an overlay library and uh, just to clarify the slot library is essentially the various slots or components that we're going to put together the overlay library is going to be all the various textures we are going to apply to the slots um, we're then going to add a uh, race library now we have to stop here because the race library are when we say the races it's technically partially accurate um, at the moment it's only going to be two genders so if you've only got default UMA installed um, without any additions then you'll only have a human male race and a human female race um, trust me from experience it is entirely possible to make other races and have some one things there oh fantastic deals just for me no thank you um next we've got an uma generator um now for those of you that have no idea what uh the uma generator is this is basically what's going to put together um all of our information but not quite this is what manages it so what we need to do is we need to make sure we've got fit atlas selected um and we need to set the atlas resolution to 2048 had to get that right in my head um now what this is about is about mapping uh, textures and so on and so forth as you may have guessed and we need to make sure in our texture name list we are ready to take two textures one is going to be called underscore main text case sensitive and the other one is called underscore bump text main text is the main texture we'll be working with so what it actually looks like the bump texture is our bump map or our normal map essentially um, we'll go into that a bit later but basically it tells uh, unity where the bumps are there's more we got to do with the UMA generator but not until we add our next component which is the UMA default mesh combiner now you may not know this, uh, you may know this, you may have just forgotten. Um, but what UMA actually does is it combines all of the uh, pieces of data from different slots to make a humanoid. This is why UMA actually doesn't require um, feet and everything else and it actually requires a whole load of bones to be uh, basically rigged because if something isn't uh, aligned to that bone then it can't make a mesh that's going to work. So theoretically you could just have um, a single human mesh but it wouldn't be a very good idea and it wouldn't be compatible with the resizing um, not unless you custom edited it so last one we have is UMA context and this is just a context library so basically UMA knows what we're talking about when we're talking about a race library in the scripts what we're talking about when we're talking about a slot library and what we're talking about with an overlay library once we've done that, we go right away back to our UMA generator. Now we've got this lovely thing here, Texture Merge Prefab. 
so we're going to type in here texture merge now again what this is actually doing here we go is is actually merging all the textures into one final texture that goes on top of the mesh yep that's what's actually going on so all of those picture files and everything are being put together same with the mesh combiner as i mentioned the mesh combiner which we're going to drag from over here into this is basically taking all of those vertices and everything and putting them in one so we've now got our umacore ready all we need is something to generate a character so i'm just going to take that out of there actually and i'm going to call this umacar gen now at this point you need to write your own script for a character generator i've already done it um i'll put a link in to the um comment uh, that that bit description there we go um but what you need to make sure it has is obviously your uma generator your slot library overlay library and race library and if you want to have an idle animation already then that's going to go in anim controller uma controller we're going to leave blank um just going to open it as well quickly so i've already made this up so just as a quick overview um it's a derivative, I suppose, uh, if you can call it a derivative of um, basically Uma. So standard layout, uh, you've seen it all before. This is going to be quite important though. Private int number of slots. So that's the number of slots that our Uma is going to have. Um, try not to have it too excessive. Make sure you've got enough to clove your Uma, but never have too many. Because um, obviously it's just eating away at memory, theoretically then. Now, we've got standard create game object initialize attach set up slot away slot up more references can't speak uh create a mail and generate the humor so we grab the reference to a recipe etc yada 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 all good so that's all in place we're now going to go down here now this is the bit here we go where we start making our model into a slot and this is dead easy create oh almost forgot Actually, no, I'll do it in a sec. Great, a folder called slots. Now, at this point, you're thinking to yourself, hold on. What about the slots and overlay here? Very quick and easy to add. So, make, double check them, make sure they're ready. Um, obviously, turn this into a prefab now if you need to. Uma, content, Uma, legacy. Remember, we're making legacy content at the moment. Um, you can literally drag the entire slots across and the entire overlay. So overlays over here. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about compress and read write. We'll leave that for now. And slot library. So slots gets dragged over this time. So you should have a slot library that's full and an overlay library that's nice and full. And then we have our slots directory down here, which we're going to do much the same with. When we've got slots or more slots, we're going to drag them all over in one into the slot library and as you can guess we're also going to add a folder called overlay now this is just getting it ready for later on really um for now we're just worried about slots so what we're going to do is we're going to click up here this is how we start to add a slot we click uma uh slot builder and it's really easy drag and drop so take your model once you're happy it's ready drag it over um, our material for now we need to add one so we're going to select uma legacy it's basically telling it that the material type is going to be a main texture and a bump texture there's already one set up for it so that's fine uh, slot destination folder drag slots over the top um, and that's it boom just click create slot and then if you check the console it should say process oh, clear that for a sec processing etc yada 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 and then success well i've just cleared it um then you have your slots and it's just a simple case of drag it over to the slot library and you have your slot here one thing to be a little bit wary of you want to know this slot name that's the important bit for our script because this is what we're going to be typing in uh, i've done it before where i've typed an underscore slot and been like what's going on um bad times so we go to our script and it's exactly the same as dealing with any of these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens if we don't instantiate an overlay though. So we're going to take UMA data, UMA recipe, slot data list. So we need a new slot. We haven't used seven yet. So we use seven. Take a look at our name, UMA human male trench coats. 
just going to copy and paste that over and we now have the trench coat in slot 7 and then all we have to do is press play and then here's what happens when there's no overlay oh no where's our trench coat there's not one here now you look in our console it doesn't say there's any particular error with that uh, there's something there attached to my script that's pointless don't worry about that but there's no trench coat it's because there's no overlay there's nothing for it to render so what we're going to do is we're going to be really really cheap for now because we're just making sure the model works we're going to go slot data 7 male body 2 and then what should happen is you open it up and as if by magic what should happen is you see a very puffy man which if you notice is actually our man wearing his trench coat so you can look around um, if you've already set up an animator then you by all means can do that but we now have our model in the game so now all we need to worry about is texturing and setting up materials hooray um, but for now just fiddle around with it make sure you're happy and then we can go on to actually laying a material and stopping him from looking like some sort of giant cannibal who wears the people he eats skin yeah um so have fun with that and i'll see you in the next video